recognize that in having universal health coverage, you really need to invest a lot in terms of infrastructure, in terms of the human resources, and of course, in terms of also digital health. Because where you cannot have services provided by, or you can't recruit the health workers there, with e-health as one of those um, uh, enablers, uh, a consultant can sit anywhere and using technology you are able to interface with the patient, with the health worker at a particular post and provide a solution to the problem. So we really need to look at that, but also most importantly, we need to engage communities. Yeah. yeah. So I know, especially in most of the developing countries, we have health workers who are on the move. I mean, if you don't motivate them to do their work, they will definitely go to another place where they can, where they feel more satisfied. The equipment are there, the working environment is okay, and also the pay for the health workers is okay. So these are challenges that we face. First of all, the infrastructure, the equipment, the health workers, who should be able to provide the service. Those are key. Those are key. And uh, we've seen that in Uganda, at least 60% of the population are in a five kilometer radius to areas where health services are being provided. How much investment is needed for the rest of the 40% to get access to these healthcare services? Uh, allow me to correct this. Actually, it's not 60%. Mm. We have moved on and we have been investing over the years, gradually trying to reduce on the walking distance of the populations to the health facilities. So as we speak now, we are at 86 percent. 86 percent. Yes, of the population are within five kilometer radius. So we are left with the 14 percent. And as I, I, just to let you know that within the next three years we should be able to cover the entire country because this is something that we are now working on. Every year we take on uh, some of those um, sub counties. This is the lowest administrative unit. Uh, we pick on some selected sub counties. This year alone we are doing about 200 and 25 health facilities being constructed in different sub-counties. So in the next coming two years, we should be able to cover the entire country. That is, provide the basic health care services on maternal, child health, TB, HIV, those other uh, non-communicable, I mean communicable diseases, majorly. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, our focus also is on the, the non-communicable diseases, where we need uh, more skilled health professionals, so we are working on that as well. Yeah, you said in the next two years, so how much uh, investment is the government going to inject into this particular project? Uh, the amount of money, of course, now the challenge is we are still, we have sub-counties that are so big. So the Ministry of Local Government has also been gradually trying to increase those administrative units. So for now, I cannot state exactly how much but maybe just for every health facility that we are constructing, we'll need about um, 500 million, which could translate into about uh, maybe $10,000, $15,000 for every, yes, for every uh, sub-county. It's about $15,000. Okay, so yeah. we've seen the efforts by the government. And yes. now the private sector, what role do they have to play? And are they doing enough? Yes, of course the private sector, most of them are private for profit health facilities. But of course we do appreciate because they complement our efforts in providing health care. And of course there are people who can afford the services. So the private uh, sector as well have been investing in health care uh, delivery services in the country and we actually do encourage them to do that. We've, as government, of course, when it comes to um, specialized healthcare services, the government comes in to provide incentives. For instance, giving free land, uh, waiving of taxes and all that to encourage the private sector to invest. But of course, once we have our national health insurance scheme up and running, we expect the private sector to also tap into that so that people can access services. If I've paid for the insurance, I should be able to access services wherever I can. So we hope to work with them in that aspect. And of course, as, I, as, as you know, the private sector are good at innovations. So we really want them to take on this because when it comes to innovations, they are, they are on top. So uh, these are some of the roles that the private sector can play, especially in digital health, promoting digital health. And this is 
where we really want to move, considering that now maybe about 80% of the population have access to at least a mobile phone in every household. Yeah, in the panel discussion, you had mentioned that uh, in 2015 there was a uh, public-private uh, partnership, partnership act, act yes. that was put in place yeah. in 2015. Yeah. What impact has it had from then till now? Of course, when you look at the investments in health from that time, it has greatly improved. We've had private, uh, different private uh, investors investing in health, and not only, of course, the challenge we have is everybody focuses on the Kampala region, but with this policy now in place, we have incentives even in upcountry, uh, rural, remote areas. So some of the private, sec uh, private, um, the private sector have actually moved to some of those areas and invested outside uh, the capital city. Yeah. So that is pa 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 part of what we have achieved under the PPP yeah. policy. But also the private sector has been contributing some, um, providing some other support donations and so on to some of our health facilities, organizing health camps, which are also good because when health camps are organized in the countryside, then different specialists are taken to provide uh, services to the underserved communities in those areas. And that is one way that they have been helping us. But also the insurance scheme in, the, in, the, in, in my country, majorly it's the private sector that has been running. We don't have uh, community health insurance schemes may be less than even 1%. So it's the private uh, insurance schemes for health that are actually in existence as we speak now. Yeah, and uh, earlier on you've touched on innovation, you've touched on moving digital. What are some of the different digital platforms that uh, the country has put in place? You had actually talked about uh, the platform that detects infectious diseases. What impact has it had and uh, how should we see digital revolution in the health sector in Uganda? Of course, using um, these smartphones, not even smartphones, the simple phones, we have empowered our village health teams to be able to report. We have a reporting mechanism to this national surveillance uh, unit where the village health teams can actually provide information as soon as they detect some strange diseases that nobody knows what it is. So because of that timely reporting from the villages by the village health teams, we've been able to attend to uh, the viral hemorrhagic fevers where we have, or whatever disease outbreak that we have in a record time, and this has reduced on case fatalities. So really this innovation around um, using our technology has really helped a lot, and this is the way to go. So we really, we are still at the infant's stage, but we hope that maybe in the next five years we should be uh, seeing this as an advanced way of really providing healthcare services to the 